children of God. And if children, then heirs and the heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be also glorified together. Suffering is no longer a thing taught in most churches. Uh, Jesus, Jesus. They teach prosperity. That you're the head and, and the tail. Mm -hmm. You're above always and ever beneath. Well, I'm, I might need to check myself. Because then sometimes I, I, I get to the end of my bank account and I still have bills due. There's some days I don't feel good in my body. There's some days I, people don't like me. They just don't get along with me. So, so does that mean that I'm outside of the will of God? No, it means that I'm suffering with Christ. See, see, y'all have to understand that Jesus suffered at the hands of religious people who didn't like him because of what he was saying. Yes. They didn't like him because his actions brought light to their darkness. See, when you walk in the presence of sinners, they can't take the glory of God being revealed from your life. So they're not going to have you in their circle because they condemn them. So when you try to run with the world, you choose to walk away from God. Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in verse number 17, if and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. And so be that we suffer with him, that we may we be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes. Jesus. Are you dressed and ready for the occasion? Oh, Jesus. You can't suffer a little while you're here. But, but, but the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to what God's about to do in us. Yes. I, I need to know, is there anybody here this morning who's ready for the coming of the Lord? Jesus. You, you may say, I, I, I don't want to go today. I, I, I'm not ready for the rapture today, but, but are you ready for the coming of the Lord? You don't know where he is and you don't know when he's coming, but, but you've got to be ready. That's right. We've got to stop this walking on the fence as believers. Mm -hmm. If I do this and nothing happens, mm -hmm. then I'll do that again. We've got to stop this God mugging at I work for him, but we sit and make ourselves comfortable. God's talking at your heart because there's a work that has to be done in order for somebody else to hear yes. the gospel. Amen. Turn with me to St. Matthew chapter 25. And I'm almost finished. But I need to know, are you dressed and ready for the occasion? Are you dressed and ready for the occasion? Jesus said in St. John chapter 14, verse 3, And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may, ye may be also. Jesus is going away to prepare a place for us. Yes, yes. St. Matthew chapter 25. There was a Jewish custom that, and I want you all to understand, if you want to understand Christianity and how God is working with his people and what all this means. You need to study old Jewish traditions and customs. You'll understand how the Bible makes so much sense when you understand Jewish customs. There was a Jewish custom that says that when a young man was ready of age to be married, his father would send him to his kindred. Yes. He would either send the boy or he would send his servant, as in the case of Abraham with Isaac, he would send his servant to his family to choose a wife to keep it all in the bloodline. And then the, the, the bride would be chosen. And the bride would have to keep herself in a certain way until that young man comes back for her. It's the same with what God has done with us. He sent Jesus to choose his bride. Jesus. And he told the bride to keep yourself unspotted from the world. He said, touch not the unclean things of the world. I will receive you unto myself and I'll be a father unto you. He says to you that he's coming for a church that is without spot, without blemish, or any 
he starts slipping. Yes. So the Bible tells us in St. Matthew chapter 25, starting with verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Hmm. Christians who got saved understood the principles of godliness but didn't stick with truth or didn't stick with God in his word mm -hmm. have now gone away into false teaching and seducing spirits and they're now walking after things that are not conducive to good growth in the life of a believer. Mm -hmm. You were once saved but you didn't decide to take enough or get enough knowledge or enough spirit to take you from salvation to eternity. Yes. The Bible says that in verse 4, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, and while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. How many of y'all know that Jesus is away from us right now? He's at the right hand of the throne of God, making an intercession for us. He's preparing the mansions, the places where to go in and possess. But like in, Psalm, in Matthew chapter 25, the church is now sleeping. The church is now sleeping. The Bible says in verse 6, And at midnight... There was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to do what? Meet. To meet him. How many of you know the Bible says, And Jesus shall appear with the shout of the trump of God, and, and, the, and, 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 and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes. When that call is made, if you're not of his, you're not going to hear. Yes. When the call Children to do whatever they want to do, and it's pulling them away from God and godly principles. But 